Uh, sorry, I got cut off there, but <clears throat> what I was saying was, um, you know, what you'd want to do with the diagram is go ahead and uh, locate the modules on a circuit, assuming that the circuit is more complex than just a, a basic lighting circuit uh, without modules. Um, if your suspected issue is in a, in a circuit that has any kind of a module, electronic computer, something with non-moving parts that power goes in and out of, those are the things that I would recommend you disconnect first. So again, for your general rules, the next step would be to get a diagram, identify the circuit. In this case, it's a backup and accessory. So you would search, for example, for the, um, you know, maybe the power outlet, AKA cigarette lighter, whatever circuit that is, that's the one we're working on here. So go through that list and then start uh, eliminating things, unplugging them and watching the meter as you do so. So here we are currently, we've settled down to about 242 millivolts, 0.24 amps about. And um, let's go ahead and uh, go a little bit further. Now again, this is the weird part, but you need to keep things like doors and such closed while you do what you gotta do inside. If you absolutely need to have the door open, the best thing to do would be to open the door and, uh, crap, I guess I would want to show you that, but there is a switch, the, um, the open switch, that you can remove that switch and unplug it if you have to have the door open. Basically, by disconnecting that switch with the door open, the light should be off and your meter shouldn't change with the door open from where it is with the door closed. I'm just going to leave it closed and reach in because obviously I locked it and armed the system, so... I'll just reach in there and do what I have to do. Now, this is what I was saying earlier about this panel had stopped working on them. All these lights had went out, which uh, in, in my experience, every time that happens, this unit is bad. There's nothing you can do about getting them to work again. And what actually it does is you, you can still work the fan. It still turns the fan on and off, but it won't engage the compressor. It won't close the recirc door. It won't put any of the modes into play. Okay, and I think also your temperature is affected. You won't be able to adjust the temperature because this is the only manual part of the circuit. The rest of this is controlled by a module that is behind this thing itself, all right? So there's basically two screws under here. There's one here, and then there's another there, Phillips screws, which I've already removed. And um, you, there's also one behind the clock, which you gotta pop to turn the light on. So once you pop the clock out, then you can see right there was another screw, okay? And then, uh, you should be able to pull the panel out from there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and remove the panel since I already had it loose. Two screws, one there, and snap clips that are in there very tight. So you, you wanna get some tools in here to pop those clips out. All right, um, I went ahead and pulled that. So let me go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and disconnect the hazard switch, which I don't suspect will make a difference. So I'll unhook that. But the clock, for example, it wouldn't be weird if the clock was shorted internally and, and pulling all the amperage. So, I'm not doing this wrong. You actually need to remove this first. I need to hire a video crew, but uh, in the meantime. So the clock's removed. I just unplugged the clock. I'm actually gonna run real quick. And I'm going to look at the meter, see if it made a difference in place it was the clock. Again, everything you disconnect, you want to keep checking this. Because you could stumble across the problem before you get to where you're trying to go. Didn't really change it much. It has settled a little bit less. Now all the modules are fully asleep. It's been long enough. But um, it still really is excessive. Again, shouldn't be a lot more than a zero here, a two is there, and another zero there. Alright, so. Let's go back to this. Now we got the thing unplugged, so I'll go ahead and remove the module. I'm sorry, the HVAC control assembly, as Honda would call it. And so if you look behind here, there's the module that I'm talking about. This whole thing is a module. All of this is computer nonsense going on in here. And this controls heat and all of that. Heat, AC, mode doors, sends all the signals on those wires. And this is your good old-fashioned, simple, like a light bulb circuit, just a blower fan with a resistor and things like that. So this is, again, separate, and that still works and will always work because the computer isn't involved. How ironic is that? But um, let's go ahead, and I'm just going to go straight for this one because I know, judging from the magnitude of wires going to the thing, 
that that's the computer portion of it. So I'm not actually gonna unhook the, the blower switch. I'm just, I mean, I could if I wanted to, but again, my hunch is there, I'm gonna stick with this. Unhook that. Oops. You probably wanna be a little bit more careful than I am being here. Because scratches occur easily on interior parts. Unhooked, let's see what we have for our readout. Proof in the pudding, ladies and gentlemen. That was our issue. That was drawing the battery. And now you see we've settled in to just under 20 milliamps at 0 0.017. Okay, with 0 0.020 being the maximum. All right, so quick recap. How to do a draw test. You probably could have X'd out of the video a long time ago, or maybe I should make a quick one just on how to perform a draw test. But we initially did that in less than a few minutes. Simple, hook up your red leader mead to the negative battery cable. The negative meter lead should be on the negative battery post. Also importantly, your, your meter lead should be switched from the volt to the amp, um, the amp port. Okay, and then again, we went ahead and closed our switch. Okay, made sure all our, door, our doors are closed. Window doesn't matter, the car doesn't know if the window is open or closed really. Um, so it doesn't make a difference, but that's it. With everything off, I even went ahead and hit the lock button to make sure that the alarm system would be at work so that everything that normally works with the battery off is working and I get to watch how much power is being consumed. So we've pretty much effectively diagnosed this as a bad AC control um, unit. And so the next step is to find one from your local salvage yard because they are pretty expensive. But other than that, we've effectively figured this out and worst case scenario, we could have just left that unplugged, reassembled everything. And this guy would come out of work every day and his battery would uh, be nice and fresh still. All right. Thanks for watching.